Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, yeah, in Moodle 3.3, we released a new um, document converter, which uses Google Drive. Um, it's uh, the first thing that I will we'll do is explain what a document converter is, because uh, um, it's quite specific. Uh, and I'll I explain the actual problem that we're solving by adding this uh, new version of it. But basically, um, there's some processes in Moodle uh, where we need to take a Word file and convert it to a PDF. Now, the main use case um, that we need to do this conversion for is the assignment annotate PDF feature that people um, will be familiar with that lets you draw over the top of a uh, student's assignment submission and add comments and uh, give them feedback. And then they get, get a downloadable version of that uh, submission. Um, they can get it as PDF or they can view it online. This annotate um, PDF part of the assignment module um, originally came uh, from a plugin in the plugins database um, a few years ago now, uh, which uh, used to look like this. Uh, and then we, uh, the functionality in there was so good that we went through and we, uh, we had to make a lot of updates and um, uh, improve the UI. Uh, but we took that pretty much the idea of that plugin and, and added it directly into core, so it's now built in for every site. That plugin is really cool and it was actually written by uh, Davo Smith, um, who used it in his own teaching. Uh, and so uh, by using it and also being a developer, he, could, he spent a lot of time refining it and making it uh, a really useful tool for teachers. So the way that that plugin actually works under the hood is it takes a PDF file and then it uses a program on the Moodle server called GhostScript, which is what that funny um, sheet with the horns is. <laughs> uh, that's their actual logo, I didn't make that up. Um, and it uses GhostScript to take that PDF and split it into a series of image files. And when you view the files in Moodle, what you're actually looking at is the image file on the background and then you're creating annotations on top of that image file. So the annotations is whatever you draw and all the comments that you add. Uh, and then when you're finished, you save it, and it uses Ghost Script on the server again, which is this little program, uh, to make it into the PDF that the students can download. Uh, now, Ghost Script itself uh, likes to eat PDF files, but it doesn't like to eat Word files, um, just because that's the way it is. Uh, and also other kinds of office documents like PowerPoints and um, spreadsheets and um, HTML files and things like that. It only knows how to read this one kind of file. So um, we need something um, to make that easier. A student, you can tell them so that they have to upload all their assignment submissions as PDF. Um, and if they do that, then uh, we don't have to do any conversions on the server. We can just use GhostScript and everything will work. But um, a student might understand uh, complicated maths, but they might not understand file types so much. Um, if It depends how comfortable they are with computers and, and lots of things. So it's much better if we can just take whatever file they give us and convert it to PDF for them. So in order to do that, we need another thing on the server. So uh, in a couple of versions ago, we wrote uh, something so that we could do this on the server. We didn't want to write our own because um, uh, it's actually a very difficult task to try and understand all the different possible Office formats and convert them into a PDF in a, a quality way um, that preserves all of the character sets and images and formatting. Um, there wasn't any uh, good choices for a library that we could just uh, use to put into Moodle. Um, and another option would have been using a cloud service. Now, there are some cloud services that exist, but whenever we add a new feature um, in Moodle, we try and do it in a way that um, everybody can uh, use it uh, without having restrictions. So cloud services um, are good for some things, but uh, in some environments, People aren't allowed to use them because maybe they're on an intranet or maybe they're um, in China or um, 
or maybe they don't have any money to pay for a cloud service uh, on top of their Moodle site. So we try and prefer open source solutions and we try and uh, get something that uh, maybe it requires some configuration, but, uh, but people should be able to install it without restrictions. So there was two good choices for open source um, document conversions which we looked at. The first one was Pandoc and the second one was Unicomv, which is part of uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice. Um, Pandoc was looking really promising until we started testing it with um, more complicated documents and basically the results that you get out of it didn't look anything like the files that you send into it. So that's a big problem when you're trying to mark um, students' assignment submissions. Uh, you don't want them to be marked down for poor formatting and things like that when it's actually the, a problem with the system. Uh, Uniconf gave us very good results, but the problem is it's, ve it's very hard to install. So um, some people here, um, I'm sure the Catalyst guys have looked at it, but uh, it's very, it requires um, some very technical uh, knowledge for the system administrator who's trying to set this up because it's not designed to be run uh, on a web server. Um, it's actually designed to be run on somebody's desktop machine, uh, just doing one file at a time. So um, because of that, it's quite complicated to get it installed and working well. Um, and we got a lot of complaints, basically. People tried to set this up and they couldn't do it properly. So uh, what we tried to do in Moodle 3.3, the first thing is that we just tried to make this into an API. So people didn't like the, the Uniconf part of this process. So we tried to make it plug-in based so that people could come up with their own solutions um, and add them in themselves. So maybe they could integrate with the cloud service or add another way to do it. Um, but the other thing that was happening at the same time is that we were working on our office integrations and we wrote a lot of um, new APIs for dealing with uh, Google and Office 365. And um, it just so happened that Google has a very simple way where you can upload a file to Google and download it as a PDF. Um, and now we had a nice API to talk to Google. Uh, all we had to do was just plug those things together um, and we got a very simple uh, document converter which uses Google Drive. So um, all you have to do, if you're already using the new Google Drive integration, you'll have already set up all of the authentication and the system accounts that you need. So all you would need to do in that case is just click on this little I and enable the document converter um, and there's no other installation that you have to do. Uh, if you aren't using the Google integration, maybe you're using the Office 365 or you're not using any of those things, you can set up the, this document converter and use it without any of the other pieces of the Google integration. So people don't even have to know that you're using this behind the scenes. Um, it will just, every time it needs to convert a document, it will upload it to a specific Google account, download the PDF, and then delete the original file. Um, it is important to know that it actually does send the files to Google and then brings them back um, just in terms of privacy and any um, uh, privacy policies or anything that you might have at your in, uh, institution. Um, but it does work really well and uh, it gives you some good functionality. So as I mentioned, that's how it works. Uh, it, every time it needs to do a conversion, it uploads it into Google and then downloads the PDF. And it reuses all of the same configuration for the other parts of the Google integration. Uh, Another benefit is that um, the processing is actually done on Google. So sometimes doing that document conversion can be a CPU intensive job. And if you're doing it in your web server, that might slow down the processing of web requests and give students, like uh, make your site seem slow for a minute or so. Um, but in this case, it's not actually doing that. It's Google that's gonna slow down, not you. And they can handle it, they've got lots of um, big data centers. Uh, some 
things to note about it is that uh, it will use bandwidth to upload and download the files to Google. Um, so if you're being charged for that bandwidth, you might want to look at the volume of files and keep an eye on it. Um, as I mentioned, you should put it in a privacy policy that files are shared with Google and the reason why they're shared with Google. Um, uh, and the other thing is just that uh, different Google accounts have limits on the number of uh, API calls you can make to them. Um, it's uh, something that you can configure and it just depends on your type of account that you have uh, with Google um, and you can see it in the Google console uh, how many API calls you're making and um, whether you're going to hit a limit or not. So uh, the other thing to mention is that um, we did make this a plugin API, so people can write plugins to do this conversion now. And it's got a category in the Moodle plugins DB, which is currently empty. So if anyone feels like writing another kind of plugin, they could be the first. And uh, they can have the best stats and get all good ratings and all sorts. So there's an opportunity for people. Um, and that's the end. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Damien. Uh, questions? Does anyone have questions for Damien? Here we go. Hey, Damien. Uh, you, you said with the documents being sent to Google Drive and converted and sent back, so it's fair to presume uh, that's offshore? Um, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, it could be offshore. Uh, I guess there's some settings in the Google administration console that let, give you some control over that. Um, but uh, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't played with that myself. So. What is Go do you know what Google might do with the file when it's you know, converted and sent back? Is anything left with Google? No, we delete the file yeah. as soon as been, it's been right. converted. Thank you. We had lots of problems with the bibliographies being changed around and the formatting being t taken out for the Unicode thing. Is Google Drive any better or Google Conversion? Um, I don't know specifically about um, bibliographies, uh, but the conversions that I've seen have supported everything that um, has been in the Word documents uh, that I've tested it with. So. Okay, great. Any other questions? Okay, thank you Damien.